All right. My name is Harry Braun, and uh, I'm the author of the Democracy Amendment, which is a 28-word uh, amendment that I'm going to explain to you a little bit that will profoundly change our country. Uh, now, I realize that you probably think, well, wait a minute, we're already a democracy. I mean, you hear that from everyone on the news all the time. All of the newscasters, all of, even professors of law will say, oh yes, we're a democracy. Uh, and uh, there's one thing about uh, telling the truth that's just really uh, important to me, because I'm a scientist. <laughs> and uh, in the scientific community, uh, saying things that aren't true uh, is just uh, forbidden. I mean, uh, that's a good way to get uh, ruined in terms of your reputation is when you start manipulating information like that. Uh, we don't want to uh, distract the meaning of words. And our country has never, ever been a democracy which is defined by two words. And you don't need a law decree to figure this out. It's called majority rule. That doesn't mean that you just get to vote in these phony elections that we have that nobody can prove who won anything because they're all done with these uh, hacked computers that uh, everybody knows they're hacked. I mean, the, the fact that we continue to use them is what's so amazing when all we really need to use are paper ballots. And we don't need these expensive paper ballots that they're talking about where the, they're going to go to all this trouble to make it difficult. We're going to, I'm going to explain to you how, first off, we have to ratify this amendment with a ballot. In fact, this is the ballot right here. And the, the amendment is 28 words long, and it basically reads, We, the voters, hereby empower the majority of American voters to approve all federal laws, legislation, presidential executive orders, and judicial decisions that impact the majority of voters. That would mean all Supreme Court decisions would have to be approved by the majority of voters, which I'd like to refer to as a universal mind of some 60 or 80 million people, depending upon once, once voting really means something in the sense of, oh, you're not just going to go elect uh, a bunch of people that then go back to Congress and spend 90% of their time meeting with lobbyists uh, to raise money for themselves. Uh, and what, wouldn't you? If, I mean, if you were elected and you got all these lobbyists knocking at your door trying to give you money, uh, it's a hard thing to walk away from. And, and boy, the, uh, that's what happens in the way our Congress is set up. Because it is not a democracy and never has been. It's always been a republic. And if you think a democracy is the same thing as a republic, well, that's what the oil industrial complex and other people who want to keep you uneducated, uh, that's what they want you to believe. That, oh, it's all the same. Don't ask too many questions here. Let me tell you something about republics. They're <laughs> the... Uh, let's see, what's one of the most despicable governments you might want to think of? Let's say uh, Nor the government of North Korea with Kim Jong-un. Uh, now, and his, that's about as uh, grotesque as you can get there. Uh, he lives in, uh, his, his kingdom is a republic. Uh, the Iran uh, constitution is a, a republic. China, uh, Russia, uh, you, you, if you want to look at all the really despicable governments in the world, they are republics. And the only democracy in the world is never mentioned by anyone. <laughs> Most people don't, what? There's a, what do you mean? Who, there, there's a democracy other than the United States? Well, the United States is not a democracy. It's a republic. It will become a democracy when you download this ballot. You and we need to get, well, you need to understand when it comes to ratifying amendments, normally it's done where uh, someone proposes it either in the Congress or somewhere, and then it gets uh, has to be proposed to the voter, uh, they, not to the voters, excuse me, but to the state legislatures, and <clears throat> that means you got to get them to vote for it. 
And I can tell you right now, there isn't any state leg I mean, state legislators are much easier to bribe by the lobbyists than the Congress. Uh, <laughs> it takes a lot more money to bribe a member of Congress than a local state legislature. But they all want the money. So uh, they are not going to, uh, they are never going to vote to ratify an amendment that's going to take away their lobbying rights to cash in as an elected official. So how do you, and that's why the Equal Rights Amendment and other amendments never passed. Now, anybody who bothers to read Article 5 of the Constitution that actually deals with modifying the Constitution will find out that there's some what is called emergency clause language in Article 5 put there by one of our founding fathers, one of the good guys, George Mason from Virginia, who had a passion about giving the voters uh, an emergency cord they could pull if they ended up getting a really despicable elected uh, leader who was abusing uh, his office and, and they couldn't get out. They, they needed an emergency clause. Okay, so he got it in at the last minute. This is the last thing done to the Constitution in terms of a, a tweak that he got, he got enough people to sign off on. And it, it's, it's an amazing uh, thing in Article 5. In fact, when you go to uh, the brawnforpresident.us website and then you download this ballot, you're going to see the back side of the ballot, which is kind of an explanation. And at the very top, right up here at the very top of this paragraph, is Article 5. See, you can, it's a, you can see it's really, that's it. This little paragraph is all of Article 5. And the red, what's, the words in red are the emergency clause uh, language that was inserted by George Mason, which allows the voters to ratify amendments in what were, were specifically referred to in here in state constitutional conventions as distinguished from a national constitutional convention which is, is most people want to avoid that because it's confusing it's confusing in the sense that article 5 doesn't give any information other than you can have one if the state legislatures want to get together and, and hold a national uh, convention, they can do that. And then you could do anything in that national convention. Uh, which is why it, most people don't want to do it. <laughs> they don't know what's going to happen. <clears throat> this second convention that we are talking about to ratify the Democracy Amendment, that's going to be done with what are called state constitutional conventions who only have the power to do one thing, ratify amendments. They don't introduce it, they don't come up with it, they just ratify it. It doesn't matter who produced the amendment. That, and they say that right in Article 5, it doesn't matter where this amendment comes from. The, what makes it valid is if you get the voters in three-fourths of the states to ratify it. If they, you get that done, it's, then it's law. End of story. Okay, the voters can ratify amendments. And yet, nobody in this country knows this. No professor of law has bothered to explain it to anyone. So, uh, <laughs> as an independent Democratic presidential candidate, and I say independent because the Democratic Party <clears throat> is not Democratic. I can tell you, I, I have tried to talk to this democracy amendment to a great many demo, so-called Democrats and they don't even want to hear it. Many of them won't even read it. They, you know, like democracy. Well, yeah. And let me tell you, I, as, I, as I like to point out, we live in a very Orwellian world. That's, as a scientist, it's why I hate politics. Uh, and by the way, I'm not alone. Uh, <laughs> we have... Uh, Harvard University just published a major national poll that said 84%, 84%, that's a whopping number of get 84% of voters to think of anything. But this includes both Republicans and Democrats and independents. 84% of them think our government is despicable. They don't like it at all. They're disgusted with it, just like I am, because it's so ugly. 
and bright, and where it's just the corruption is so obvious. And that was before Donald Trump came along. He created a whole new level of corruption. Nobody's ever seen anything like Donald Trump in this country ever since the country. Because he's effectively become, as a, because of the, his Republican enablers, America's first dictator. He is right now, uh, if you watch the impeachment hearings, he, he told the Congress to go take, it, uh, take a dive. He wasn't going to respond to anything. He told everyone in his administration they will not respond to any subpoenas. They're not going to do anything according to the Constitution. He just seized control of the government. He fired all of the uh, competent professional people like the, the uh, well, geez, the entire legal, all the state attorney, uh, the uh, field, oh, well, the, from one end to the other to the government. Uh, he's been firing people, including all the scientists at EPA. And uh, the, I was going to say U.S. attorneys, he, he fired all of those, right? Right? right after he got elected. Just fired them all. Uh, and mostly because he didn't want the ones in New York maybe looking into him. Because he's got so many things to look into because he's been one of the biggest uh, crooks and corporate pirates in probably human history. <laughs> I mean, that's what he has spent his life doing is being a pirate. Um, and Which is why he doesn't like scientists or anybody that knows anything. Um, because he knows very little other than how to be a good mobster. And, and I'll give him credit for that. He, he seems to be a very good mobster and he's brainwashed. It. I can't believe we've got a third, a third of the country or maybe 40% in some cases uh, that don't understand just how pathetic this guy is. His uh, niece knows, however, <laughs> Mary Trump and, and her book, I think. Uh, and and she, she's a professional person. I mean, she's a PhD in psychology and, uh, and she... And I, I think we both have the same view that this guy uh, is really dangerous, especially as president in charge of nuclear weapons and, and uh, well, there's all, all sorts of reasons that he's very dangerous. But the, and most of the voters can't stand him, except the voters can't do anything about it because voters don't have any power in our country right now. So, if we ratify this democracy amendment, all that will change. It'll change literally overnight, and it'll happen really fast because you download this ballot from the bronforpresident.us website. Once you do that, you're going to fill it out. You're going to put your name and address on here, and you're going to then fold this up, put it in an envelope, and mail it to your Secretary of State's office because that's where all the voter registration data is. Now, at the top of this ballot, it says an Article 5 has an of the U.S. Constitution. Article 5, State Constitutional Convention Citizen Ballot. That's what this is. That's what you're going to be downloading. And when you fill it out at home, you're going to then sign it and put your address in there because you're going to be validated when it gets to the Secretary of State's office and they're going to easily know, oh yeah, that's who this person is. I can see their name, address, and signature. And then they're going to archive it after they count it. And, and when uh, a majority of voters in 38 states mail in those ballots, this amendment is ratified. And then we will become a democracy. And then the majority of voters, who happen to be women, will be in charge of approving anything our federal government does. Then we'll hold a new election using similar paper ballots that are downloaded only this time it'll be from the Secretary of State's office in each state. And mail, then those ballots, when they're filled out at home, will be then mailed back to the Secretary of State's office, just like we do it here. And then we'll have a new government, uh, uh, democratically elected with a valid election. And this new government, uh, we're going to then <laughs> be following the wishes of the majority of the voters. And, the, and I can guarantee you from the, uh, the polls that I've seen, 84% of the voters, for example, hate this lobbying and money and politics. We're going to get rid of that immediately. We're going, to make, we're going to run the United States Congress like the United States Navy, if you can imagine that, on pro, with pride but no bribes, pure and simple, no money in it at all. So if you're, going, if you're trying to get elected to go get rich, go find another uh, line of work to get into because it will be illegal under this new democratic government. 
And we're not going to have any secrecy because when you're in a democracy, the voters are in charge. And so the voters need to know everything. And none of this Fed speak. In, in fact, when, if you want to know the, the entire banking system in this country, among other things, it needs to be fundamentally changed. And, you know, you talk about people, you throw this word socialism around all the time. Hear this word socialism. What is it? Now the, the Republicans call it fascism. They call socialism fascism now. That's how Orwellian the current political world is in this country, which is why I hate it. Socialism is defined by two words. <laughs> and it's not dictatorship. <laughs> the two words are called public ownership of things like corporations, like banks, like health care systems. Like in, in the United States military, the health care system <laughs> is all nonprofit. There's no corporate, corporate profits when you go and, and get involved in health care. And why would you want doctors to become business people who are all in it for the money? And it's big money. It's so big it's bankrupting the country. Our Medicare debt is bigger than the national debt right now. And if you don't believe me, you, you need to go to usdebtclock.org website and you're, going to find, and, you, and you're going to really get sobered up real fast how uh, financially insolvent this entire country is. Which is why the money, is the, money uh, our, the dollar, the value of the U.S. dollar has been collapsing. And soon it's going to be worth nothing if the way we're, the government's now printing money. With nothing to back it up, we're just running the printing process. It's not even a printing process. They, they just, they're computer digits, you know. Oh, how many, how many uh, checks do you want to send out today? Uh, there's nothing behind them. And so what is that? It dilutes the, you know, it dilutes the money supply for everyone. That's why the value of the money collapses. It's happening all around the world right now. Because of all the dictator governments have been doing this anyway. So, and there's a lot of those. And now we have a dictator in our own country, which is a real problem. Uh, who has gutted our country already in terms of fired everybody that was competent and, uh, and God knows all these judges he's appointed. About. We have to get control of this government, though, fundamentally. We need to do it immediately. We don't have time to wait for another phony election uh, with a phony computer voting system that's going to give it back to Trump again. We need to immediately get the voters aware of this issue. And so you can help me a lot. In fact, I... If I got elected as president, just for, and I'm not, because nobody knows who I am, and they don't know who I am because none of the networks will cover me, because they all know I represent this hydrogen engineering community. And since the oil companies essentially own these television networks now, through their shell corporations, they're not going to let anybody like me ever get on the air. They don't want you knowing about the hydrogen age, and you can run your car on fuel made from water in your home. <laughs> that was first done in the year 1800. It's how, it's how complicated it is. The very wor world's first car built in 1807 was running on hydrogen fuel made from water that was super safe, very easy to do. You can do it on your de on a kitchen table with a glass of water and a little battery and put the wires in the water. I mean, it's that simple. And it's completely carbon free, pollution free, super safe. And it's the safest fuel to use because it's the lightest element in the universe and it's the most abundant element in the universe. The fact that it's light just means if you ever do have a leak or an accident, the, the hydrogen goes up and away from you in nanoseconds. <laughs> That's a billionth of a second. Um, and so it never forms explosive mixtures like gasoline does. Gasoline's has a, gasoline has a lot of hydrogen in it, don't get me wrong. Hydrogen is what holds all these molecules together. Gasoline's a very long-chained hydrocarbon molecule. And so it has a lot of hydrogen in it. But it's all the carbon, when you, you, you mix hydrogen and carbon together, now you have something highly, highly toxic. But very chemically stable. I mean, these chemical poisons like gasoline, they're going to last for thousands of years, whether you burn them or not. I mean, it's just nasty stuff. should never be allowed to be made, much less mass-produced. Uh, except our country's run by capitalists in the oil industry, and they own both political parties. And the only way you're going to change that is with this democracy amendment. So you need to go to the Braun for President US website, download your ballot, read it carefully, and then beget, you need to j join our effort 
to get this if you're on Facebook or you have any kind of way to help get this message out because this is just an education issue. Once the voters see this move on the constitutional chessboard, this Article 5 move that I've just explained how it's the voters who can ratify this amendment at home. We can have this done in within 30 days or less, maybe within a week from the time we get this story on the national news. But it won't be easy. We've got to build a grassroots movement to force them to cover this story. Because I've sent them lots of emails, all the networks, detailed emails on all this stuff. Nobody will allow me on the air. Uh, and so this YouTube <laughs> is, the, is, is the only entity that can get my message out. And so, uh, and we have enough followers to, to get enough going here just on YouTube to make this happen. But you've got to help. I mean, this is, I can only do so much. But I can assure you that I want to get as many people on these future broadcasts on this issue as possible. And if you want to be uh, a guest on one of these broadcasts where I can do a split screen interview with you on Skype or Google uh, Hangout, we want to do that. Uh, we want to get this message out, and I like tough questions because I represent thousands of scientists and engineers who are all focused on hydrogen, incidentally. Because uh, uh, once you, uh, the fact that you don't know anything about it uh, is 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 because the these television networks you talk about uh, public ownership. Those airways are should belong to the public. Those are public airways, but they were with lobbyists. They were able to get deals in the Congress to sell the rights to those public airways to corporations to pack those airways full of garbage programming, uh, really disgusting stuff, loaded with lots of violence, and, uh, and, and commercials. Commercials up one side and down, up one side and down the other because it's all about making more money for these corporations who now who were able to get control of those public airways. Well, once this amendment's ratified, guess what? The first thing we're going to get control of is you talk about socialism, like in public ownership. How about CNN? Because right now it's run by the oil companies, and it's you can tell from with their ads and their phony fracking commercials how old, oh, how great fracking is except that they don't tell you that it contaminates aquifers forever for a fracking site that doesn't even work 24 months. These are Nuremberg class crimes that are completely ignored by CNN. And I've sent them dozens of emails, believe me, dozens. They deliberately don't want me on the air. And they have a website for story ideas, so I, I sent them lots of stuff. They're deliberately not putting me on the air. And they're criminals for doing it. And somebody needs to say something. The voters need to get learn about this, then we'll get control of those networks, and when we do, then we're going to get rid of all this nonsense that you're hearing now, and we're going to have a true science-based society where the politicians are not, are not going to have anything to say, because they're just hacks, and we need, we, that's not who we should have in our government are these politicians who are there for the money. We need serious citizens who are there, in my case, for the science and because I know that the planet Earth itself and life on it, there are thousands of scientists like myself who are saying the oil people and the, the people in charge right now are, have poisoned every man, woman, and child on this planet. Every one. The babies are now born with these oil-based poisons in all through their brains and bodies. Uh, every one of us has it in our blood. Because most of the chemical poisons now arrive in the rain and particles in the wind or in the snow because we've contaminated the entire global atmosphere for years now. It's, it's now all you have to do is Google contaminated rain and see what shows up. There's over six, 360,000 different types of oil-based and nuclear-based chemical and radiological poisons that are coming down in the rain everywhere worldwide. That's why this is a mass extinction event. We keep going on, nobody's going to be here. Not, this, is, this is killing, the insects are disappearing worldwide. The proteins are disappearing. We're, they're being melted down into these amyloid plaques. The very proteins of life within us, that the oil is dissolving them into a sti super sticky goo, gooey thing. It's called an amyloid plaque. And that's what's at the heart of cancer and autism and Alzheimer's. 
and a whole range of spectacularly terrible diseases that you can see on Wikipedia if you look up the word amyloid. That's spelled A-M-Y-L-O-I-D. And then you'll see what the oil age has, has brought us, which is planetary death. For profits, for, for a tiny handful of people, so that they can go bribe members of both political parties and get away with this kind of mass extinction of life on this earth. That's what's, that's what's at stake here. And we don't have much time left. When the scientists say we only have a few years left, they ain't kidding. And if you wait till the supermarkets go empty, let me tell you what, it'll, you will have waited too long. And right now, with this pandemic that's completely out of control because of this Trump administration, uh, and I say that because it was Donald Trump who dismantled the pandemic infection control world-class team that was in the United States all set up under the Obama administration, ready to go, ready to stop that virus before it ever got to this country. But oh no, Donald Trump didn't like Obama, of course, and so uh, he just d dismantled the entire thing in 2018. Two years before we get hit with this really nasty new virus, and I mean really nasty. This is not the flu. This is, a, this is exponentially worse than the flu. And I hope we recover from it at all. But none of this would have happened if that pandemic infection control team had not been dismantled by Donald Trump. Donald Trump is personally responsible for this mass destruction of the economy, not to mention all the lives and misery and death that's being caused. It's all because of Donald Trump. And he's getting away with it because he, he owns the Justice Department. He's a full-blown dictator. And this is the only way for the, for the citizens to get control of our government, hopefully in time. Hopefully in time. So, uh, a lot's on the table here. This is, uh, time is short. We need to make this happen. And uh, you go to my website if you need to reach me. My email address is hb at brawnforpresident.us. And if you want to get out on my program as a guest, or you want to have uh, some point you want to make, you want to argue about fracking, great, let's have a discussion about it. Because nobody's talking about any of this stuff on the news networks. They just ain't talking about it. And these are all Nuremberg class crimes that are just, oh well, we just don't really want to talk about it. Except they're poisoning your children. And if you don't think having a, a severely autistic child is, is, is a curse, you haven't had one uh, because I, I've had them in my family and let me tell you what this is serious business this is uh, the end of our life on the earth is what we're talking about here this is this is when you're talking about the rains contaminated worldwide that's a lot more serious than even the COVID-19 issue but we got both of them we got all of them even though Trump says the air is immaculate he's a pathological liar and always has been and that's reason enough to get this amendment ratified so we can stop this insanity in short order. So help me out here. I can't do this without your help. It's ready to go. It, you can do this from home. So let's make it happen while we still have time to make a difference. Thank you.